the Iyim, the islanders, the Goyim, the Gentiles, and then it says, Chatserim Teshev Qaidar, and the villages that Kedar inhabits. Hey yo, what's up everybody, welcome back to our channel. It's your boy Jesse Keegan, and we are Funny Jesse. So right about now, we're gonna do another reaction video, but before we get into the reaction guys, I'm really, really happy man. I wanna thank everybody out there who managed to get us 10,000 subscribers, man. Thank you, thank you so much. You're the realest MVP, man. We are at 10,000 subscribers right now. <clears throat> As we predicted, we're gonna get to 10,000 probably this month. I wish we could just like uh, give like uh, 10,000 giveaway and something like that. Probably, uh, maybe we're gonna do that maybe in future or something like that. Yeah, and um, but currently, what we're doing right now, we have a new channel and we just posted a video. You can just go and uh, you know subscribe to the channel down in the comment section below. There's a link down there. Just go and subscribe to the channel. Make sure to watch the video that we just dropped uh, recently, and uh, it's about my girlfriend leaving Cyprus and going to Zambia. So man, thank you, thank you so much once again. Thank you so much for getting us 10,000 subscribers. You're the biggest MVP, and thank you so much. Right about now. We're gonna do another reaction video. This one right there was suggested by a lot of people and they decided like uh, we should go react to um, and they decided that we should go react to the most detailed video. I don't know what this is all about but according to the title it looks like maybe something really uh, intense. So without any further ado guys, let's get it. I'm sorry guys, I got a flu so don't mind me. The most powerful reference to Prophet Muhammad in the Bible. We will see why I say that. So this is a long chapter. I'll just give you some highlights. It says, Hen abdi bikhri ratsa nafshi. Behold my abd, whom I uphold. Right? And this is the primary title of the Prophet وسلم, in the Quran. Subhanallah asra bi abdihi. Fa ila abdihi ma awha. And when the Prophet ﷺ would hear these ayat, he would begin to weep that Allah is calling him Abd. So here, behold my Abd, the same word in Hebrew, whom I uphold, my chosen one, and whom my soul delights. And of course, the Prophet ﷺ is Al Mujtaba, he is Al Mustafa, Al Mukhtar. It continues. Nafati uh, Ruhi alive, I shall put my ruh upon him. A spirit of revelation. Mishpat le goyim yotzi. He shall bring law and order to the goyim. The goyim are Gentiles. The word in Arabic for Gentile is ummi. Right? So, Nabi al ummi, al nadin yattabi'un al rasul, al nabi al ummi. Those who follow the apostle, the unlettered prophet, the Gentile prophet, these are possible. The motherly prophet, all of these meanings are possible. All these meanings are prevalent. Um, and then it continues. Very interesting. He will not raise his voice in the marketplace. There is a hadith in the Shema'il, our mother Aisha, radiallahu anha, she says about the Prophet, because again, nobody knows the husband like the wife. She says, uh, that he didn't even raise his voice in the marketplace. It continues, now we have iltifat in the Hebrew text, we have sudden change of person. Now God is speaking directly to this abd, to this, this servant of God, and he says, فَأَتَنْكَ لَبِرِيتْ am. I will give you as a covenant of humanity. So this prophet is, again, this abd is alamiya, he's universal. قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسِ إِنِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ إِلَيْكُمْ جَمِيعًا Surah Al-A'raf 158, the ayah that we heard, one of the ayahs that we heard at the beginning of the event. Le'or goyim, it says, as a light of the Gentiles, nurul ummiyin, a light of the Gentiles. This is a construct phrase, mudaf, mudaf ilayhi, construct noun, absolute noun. Just skipping around. Shirula Adonai Shir Khadash. 
sing unto the Lord a new song, a sacred song, a new scripture, a new language possibly. Continuing, ah, who will sing this new song according to the text? It says the islanders, the Gentiles, right, the Goyim, the Iyim, the islanders, the Goyim, the Gentiles, and then it says, Chatserim Teshev Qaidar, and the villages that Kedar inhabits. Kedar. Who is Kedar? Kedar is the second son of Ismail, السلام, according to Genesis. His name is mentioned eight times in the Hebrew Bible. Jesenia says the rabbis call all of the Arabians universally by this name. And Leishan Qaidar, Lisanu Qaidar is called, is used of the Arabic language. The Jews refer to Arabic as Leishan Qaidar, the tongue of Kedar. So this Evid, he will be uh, accepted. They will sing his new song. Who will? The Islanders, the Gentiles, and the Arabs. Another proof text of this, Ezekiel 27, 21. It says, Arav vekol nasi e Qaidar, Arabia and all the princes of Kedar. And then it continues here, Isaiah 42. Yoronu Yoshve Selah. Let the inhabitants of the rock sing. Selah, this is very enigmatic. Nobody really knows what this means. Some believe it's you know, Selah is just sort of what the Bible calls a generic sort of house of God, a fortress, a tabernacle of God of some sort. Some say it's Petra in Jordan. There is a mountain in Medina called Salah, by the way. There's a mountain in Medina. It's mentioned in the Hadith. Wallahu alam. Continuing with this Isaiah chapter 42. They will be greatly ashamed. Those who trust in carved images. Those who say to molten images, Atem Eloheinu, you are our gods. So this servant, this evid of God, stands as a bulwark against idolatry. And then it continues to call him Avdi, my servant, Malaki, my messenger. It calls him Mashullam, Mashullam, like the perfect or sound one. Evid Adonai, Abdullah. These are some of the qualities mentioned in the entire chapter. When you read the chapter, and if you know the life of the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, you will see him in this prophecy, no one else. Why? Because it specifically mentions his location. Specifically. It's not even vague. It is very specific with all the qualities he came with. He was the chosen one. His law, the, the Hebrew word there in the prophecy is the Torah. And this is a Torah after the Torah of Moses. And no Israelite prophet ever claimed to have brought another Torah. This is a new law, which this prophet, this prophet king will bring. Christopher North is a biblical scholar specifically specializing in the book of Isaiah in his commentary on this particular passage in his book Suffering Suffering Servant in Deutero Isaiah Suffering Servant in Deutero Isaiah published by the Oxford University in the University Press he stated that this judgment is something like the Arab deen or the Arabic uh, 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 religion or Islam this is what he said Islam he used the word Islam so this new law came with no one else but Prophet Muhammad is a comprehensive law. Islam is a very comprehensive way of life. He came, he will come as a light for Gentiles. He will put idol worshippers to shame. And he has something to do with Kedar, where the people of Kedar live. Kedar was the second son of Ishmael. According to the book of Genesis chapter 25, verse 13, Kedar was the second son of Ishmael, a direct ancestor of the Prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, according to the biography of Prophet Muhammad himself. So Kedar, was in Arabia, Prophet Muhammad was a direct descendant. This particular passage mentions the location directly and it mentions the Mount Sela, which is in Medina. And he will triumph against his enemies and he will be a messenger of God. All of these things put together, if they do not fit Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, then they do not fit anyone else in the history of humanity. Thank you very much. Please. Let's have a look at Isaiah, the book of Isaiah in the Bible. Now in the 29th chapter, in the 12th verse, there's something remarkable here. And it says, The Nitan, and this is perfect, the Vav consecutive, so this is explicitly future. 
And the book, the book, the revelation, scripture, Sefer, Al Kitab, the book will be given to one who does not know letters. And it shall be said to him, Qara, it is the exact cognate of Iqra. And he shall answer, Lo yadati Sefer. I don't know a book. I am unlettered. This passage is remarkable. First of all, the Prophet Muhammad is referred to as the unlettered Prophet, the unlearned Prophet. The Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, couldn't read and he couldn't write. He did not study scripture, not like Jesus, who was brought up amongst the rabbis and even at a young age, he amazed people with his learning of the law. So Jesus, may God's peace and blessings be upon him, was learned in the law. But Muhammad lived in Arabia, a pagan land. People did not know about the scripture, except for a few people amongst the children of Israel, some Jewish tribes who lived there. Otherwise, they were ignorant of that. And the Prophet Muhammad himself was not learned in the scripture. And he's called Ummi. Ummi means not learned. And so it's exactly as the Bible is saying, the book, and one of the names of the Quran is Al-Kitab, the book, is delivered to him who is not learned, who is Ummi, saying, read this, read this, in Arabic, Iqra, read this Iqra, the very first verses that God revealed to the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, as every Muslim knows, what was it? Iqra, read. The angel Gabriel comes to the Prophet Muhammad while the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he is meditating on the mountain, the Jabal Nur, the mountain of light overlooking Mecca. He's sitting there meditating. He has escaped the troubles of Mecca, the polytheism. He goes there to think about God, about creation, about humanity. And it is there that he receives on the night of Ramadan in his 40th birthday, he received the angel Gabriel comes to him says to him, Iqra. And the Prophet says, I can't read. Again, the angel Gabriel says, Iqra. But this time he takes the Prophet and squeezes him. And again, the Prophet says, I cannot read. Now the angel Gabriel squeezes him even more tightly and says, Iqra, read. The Prophet says, what shall I read? So this is exactly what happens. The Prophet says, I am not learned. I cannot read. How can I read? I'm not of those who can read. This is exactly how it is mentioned in Isaiah 29, 12. Check it out for yourself. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Such a pretty detailed, um, such a pretty detailed story right there, man. Such an amazing piece. I mean, it's such an amazing time to live in because, um, I mean, we live in the information age, the Aquarius age, where we get to learn more and get to know about more information, you get it? Though this information was there, but uh, as we live on, as we like get into the new uh, years and whatnot, we tend to learn more and we tend to become even more mature and have more wisdom. If you uh, actually want to, or if you actually want to follow the path of, you know, uh, getting to understand what is, the, is it on the other side of of religion, or probably um, trying to follow a religion that you aren't uh, familiar with, you get it. I mean, this is such an amazing time. Uh, the story here is uh, definitely talking about Muhammad. Muhammad being a prophet. I mean such an amazing prophet He is peace be upon him and I think People should emulate How he used to live and people should emulate on, on how he used to do things and stuff like that <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I think it's um People are gonna look at it like it's a hard thing to emulate it's a hard thing to live like like him It's a hard thing to follow his ways because we live in a new age and whatnot, but it's not about how hard it is, it's about trying. Why don't you just try? Why don't you just 
be that person who wants to try and see if it's going to work out for you and uh, most probably it's going to work out you know such an amazing piece right here <clears throat> and pretty much detailed too and self-explanatory you get it i mean anybody can decode what um these people right here the narrators exactly what they were saying you can narrate i mean you can decode exactly what they were saying if you feel like i reacted to this video in a better way just give me a thumbs up don't forget to go down the comment section tell me exactly what you feel about my reaction what do you feel about this video right here the most detailed video just let me know what do you think what do you think and um as i was watching i saw um i saw like some sort of a is it mecca or something not mecca but um what can i say people are uh it's like sort of a mecca or something where people are uh, going around seven times around the, I don't know what the name is but uh, I don't know is, is it mecca or something just let me know in the comment section below if I'm right or not uh, just, uh, I want to ask a question why do people go around the <clears throat> is it the mecca or something like seven times just let me know in the comment section below if you have more information I'll be really happy to learn and I'll be happy to understand it uh, more about um, what what really was happening on the video because people are going around that um that little uh box thing yeah sorry to say that yeah just let me know the comment section below anyway um another thing is that uh there's a brother who actually um uh, suggested that i should download the quran uh, application which has been amazing and i've been reading uh i've not been like uh an avid reader but i've been like kind of reading but not too much uh, and I find it pretty interesting and really amazing stories and then also something to go with like a daily drive and stuff like that anyway thank you thank you so much and the most important thing is don't forget to subscribe to the channel then we keep on subscribing then we'll give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you a better better content and last but not the least we're gonna see you in the next video or rather I'm gonna see you in the next video and peace out